Hi guys, got me tea. I hope you guys got a cup of tea. I'm going to give you a chance to um, sort yourselves out and log on to me, get on to my live. Of course, Priscilla is going to be a topic. Um, not every day, but at the moment, I feel that we don't really have a choice. We have to talk about Priscilla to defend Elvis. I think it's really important. Uh, I don't think, let me just get this a bit of a better angle. I don't think we can avoid it. I don't want it to come across like I'm picking on Priscilla. I don't want that. What I want it to see, how I want it to seem is that we don't really have a choice. We sort of have to talk about Priscilla. Now, Let's see how this unfolds, okay? It's Louis at Defending Elvis Presley. Fans want the truth. We defend the whole bloodline, all of the bloodline, yeah? So it's not just Elvis. It's Elvis, Lisa Marie, Benjamin, uh, Riley, Q, and Finley and Harper. All of the bloodline, even Vernon and Gladys. So it's, I think it's very important we do that, yeah? Uh, I have strong feelings uh, that really anything that, belonged to Elvis should still belong to Elvis. So I even have a point of view on the fact that Elvis Presley Enterprises exists. I'm not anti Joel White Shanker. I just think it should all belong to the family, to the bloodline. I really believe that. The fact that um, the lease was sold many years ago at the same time, I think, as uh, Elvis Presley Enterprises was sold, the lease of Gracelands, a 99 year lease, I think it might have started off as. I just don't agree with it. But anyway, the point of this video today, now I still have to bring up the fairy tale. I still have to bring up, now look at this picture. Look at this. I know the book's called Chart, right? But look at the picture. Isn't that the picture, the fairy tale that we all fell for? through the 50s, 60s, 70s. I mean, obviously, I know that picture's a bit. That's probably the, uh, is it the 60s or very early 70s? Probably the 60s, yeah? You tell me, guys, what year that is. But let's see if we can find some more pictures. I keep talking about how I feel that we, the public, not even Elvis fans, we, the public, let me find some pictures. I am going to read another chapter of this, chapter 14, but not today. I, I read while I'm in the mood to read. Now, we, the public, we fell for the, the love story, didn't we? No, I'm not sure how clear that is. Not very clear. Let's see if I can get a bigger picture. We fell for the love story of Elvis and Priscilla. We were disappointed when things went wrong. Let me just get this near to you. That's a very, you know, that's a lovely picture. Elvis and Priscilla looking in love, cuddling. Yeah? We all fell for it, guys. Come on. Even you people out there that are very anti-Priscilla. In the 60s and 70s, you fell for it. Some of you in the 50s, you hoped for, that the romance would uh, was going to blossom into a family. And it did, because they had Lisa Marie, beautiful Lisa Marie. We all... We're caught up in it. Elvis and Priscilla, so gorgeous. We didn't even think about the age difference. We just loved, loved, look. We just loved the romance. I know Elvis didn't like to be called the king because he always said there was only one king. But the king with his queen, both beautiful. He was... Amazingly talented and charismatic. Everyone loved his personality. She was absolutely gorgeous. Her beauty was breathtaking, I think, to many of the people around the world in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. So she was, to us, before we knew, before things went wrong, before um, unfaithfulness, Divorce, 
divorce um, settlements. Yeah, before, bef you know, right up until the launch of Graceland. Even that, even the launch of Graceland, we all bought into it, didn't we? Priscilla had saved Graceland's. She prevented Graceland's from being sold. Priscilla, it was her idea to launch the Living Museum. So the fans who adore Elvis could visit Elvis's home that he bought for Vernon and Gladys. Really, he bought for his mother. We could step in Elvis's footsteps in his own home. What a great idea. Well done, Priscilla. We all got caught up in it, didn't we? Um, Emily, you're so right. We just have the tabloids because there was no social media. We have the tabloids. We had um, uh, the magazines, the TV news clips. You know, we could buy posters of our icons, Elvis on our wall, Elvis and Priscilla on our bedroom wall. Many of us were teenagers. Many of us were um, not even teenagers yet. We bought into the movies, even the early movies. Elvis looking great, having fun. Priscilla was at home at Graceland's. We didn't know there was loads of homes. We didn't know, did we? Did we know Elvis had many homes with Priscilla? We just imagined, oh, Elvis moved from Tupelo, became massively successful, and then moved into Graceland's, bought this beautiful home for his parents. We didn't really know that he'd had other homes. They lived like the royal family, like the Kennedys, Pierce Morgan says. Beautiful Priscilla. Amazingly handsome and talented Elvis. The best looking man in the world, the most famous man in the world, in their mansion, surrounded by beautiful land. We all got caught up in it. And wow, the big news comes out. The big news comes out. Yeah, they're having, she's pregnant. Elvis gets married in 1967. I'm gonna show you, we're gonna talk about the fairy tale for a while before we talk about when things went wrong. Yeah, let's find the marriage. Elvis, and I haven't even found the video yet, but we've seen it a million times. Elvis and Priscilla's wedding, May the 1st, 1967, Frank Sinatra, Frank Sinatra helps them, loans his aeroplane out. May 1st, 19. Let's just do this little clip. I, don't, I haven't watched this particular, I have watched it, but let's listen to the wording. Frank Sinatra loans the aeroplane. They go to the Aladdin, they have a small reception, just a small one. It goes around the world, there's a news conference after. Wow, Elvis and Priscilla married. Um, and then we see the beautiful wedding footage, pictures. Wow, it's amazing. They're a perfect couple. They look beautiful together. We're all caught up in it. Yeah, we all living and breathing it. We're part of the story. Yeah, let's just watch this and I'll keep talking. On May 1st, 1967, Priscilla walked down that aisle. We called it Elvis's May Day and I was there. At about four in the morning, Elvis and Priscilla went to the Clark County Courthouse, where Elvis paid $15 for a marriage license. Then they drove to the Aladdin Hotel and retired, with the wedding set for early that same morning. There were only 14 people at the actual wedding, but a huge reception and press conference followed, and almost immediately the news was flashed around the world that Elvis Presley had been married. They were the picture of true love. Elvis was the happiest I'd seen him in a long, long time. And it was a dream come true for Priscilla. A five-foot wedding cake and a massive diamond ring that Elvis's jeweler had flown in from Memphis. An attention like she'd never, ever seen before. Michelle, Priscilla's younger sister, was her maid of honor. Mr. Presley was there, as were Priscilla's parents and family. That afternoon, we all flew back to Palm Springs. Elvis and Priscilla stayed there for a short honeymoon. 
then settling down to life in California and Graceland in Memphis. Sweet memories, of holding hands and red bouquets, Just a, a small clip, guys. A small clip. Right. Uh, I'm going to unplug this. This why is annoying. Um, so we get what I'm saying to you guys. I don't think any of us hadn't fallen for the fairy tale. None of us, guys. I don't care who you are. We all thought everything was fine. Didn't we? We all thought everything was fine. Um, then we, then we, and then things turn and we start to understand there's more to it. There's a picture of the day of the divorce. The cracks start to show. And then years later, we have a new Priscilla. An independent Priscilla. Who wanted to find herself. Yeah? Things hadn't worked out. The fairy tale wasn't a fairy tale. There were cracks. And then, unfortunately, Elvis becomes unwell, passes away, and Priscilla, quite quickly, after Vernon passes, is the queen of Graceland. She launches Graceland, saves the day, saves Graceland. Priscilla will look after everything on behalf of Elvis. She will save Elvis's legacy and keep Elvis's memory alive. Yeah, this is, this is, the, we're all brainwashed into this. Now, this book then comes out, I think 1985. Now, I've always said to you guys a million times, this is only a story that Priscilla told. It's not the truth, it's just a story in my opinion, okay? Now, you've heard me say it over and over again. I'm not going to say it again today. But what I have done is I've, um, I keep um, saying to you that you must look at the interviews in the 80s to understand, you know, eight, you know the older interviews, to understand, because... If you watch up-to-date interviews in the last, really, even in the last 20 years, you will see that um, most of what Priscilla says about Elvis is nice, most. But you watch the older interviews, and they are not nice. They paint him out in a very bad light. They make him look like a predator and many other things. So... I keep bringing up the Barbara Walters interview, so I'm going to play it and we're going to start to review it and comment on it. I've done this before, but I feel like we need to do it again. Now, a big, when this book came out, suddenly we knew this romance wasn't straightforward. There was more to it. We believed every word in this book. Come on, admit it, guys. When this book came out and we bought it and we read it, it was a good read, an easy read. It was a massive bestseller, well over 3 million copies. We fell for it. Is it hook, line and sinker? Is that how they say it? Every word in this book was treated as if it happened, as if it was history. Priscilla said, I'm going to set the wrongs to rights. I'm going to release this book. This book will cancel out all the other books, all the, all the rubbish that's been said about Elvis since he died. And I will put things right. Priscilla Presley. Priscilla Bueller. Now remember, they had been divorced for seven years. So his divorcee, really, we didn't really know what had gone on behind the scenes, was going to launch this book on behalf of her ex-husband that she was unfaithful to, that she crucified in a divorce settlement. She was going to make everything right. Elvis was going to have no say in this book. Priscilla's version of history, a rewriting of history. You've heard it all before. So many of us fell for it. 
Even now, I sometimes find it difficult that I have to take myself away from the book. Even look, Sophia Coppola's movie, which is the book, isn't it? And remember, I have to shake myself. Louis, the thing you grew up with, Priscilla and Elvis, and then eventually Lisa Marie, isn't actually reality of what happened. Yeah, we were spoon fed a fake narrative, a fake romance. Yeah, even now I think we find it hard to accept that Elvis had to go through what he went through. Because I really believe Elvis really went through a lot of pain because of committing to that engagement, then marriage. Really do think Elvis suffered. I also accept that before the marriage, before the engagement, Priscilla suffered. I do think Elvis acted like a single man in the 60s. But once they got engaged, I think Priscilla took charge. Yeah, does that make sense to you? The wedding comes. Priscilla's getting her way. The baby comes. Priscilla's getting her way. But many feel that Priscilla didn't want a baby. This is what was the beginning of the issues between Priscilla and Lisa Marie. There was some envy there, some jealousy there. Just an opinion. Priscilla's still in charge. Yeah? The baby comes. Priscilla has a, an affair, a brief affair, page 262 of this book. It's all there, guys. She gets caught out. Who knows the circumstances of that affair when it started? We don't know. Was it during the pregnancy? Had this been going on for a few years? We don't know. Was Priscilla unfaithful with other men in the 60s? There's rumour that there are at least two other people that she may have had an affair with or at least pursued that's another story so then now remember Priscilla's still in charge they have the baby she's unfaithful just after Lisa Marie is born God rest Lisa Marie's soul we love her then we have this fake marriage Elvis trying to keep a front trying to make things look like they were okay but they were not they were broken broken the marriage was broken Priscilla still now has, has the upper hand. She, she'd known Mike Stone from visiting him with Elvis at different events over the years. I think even in 19, in, even in the hunt on her honeymoon, I think they may have gone and watched one of his uh, either fights or exhibitions, something like that. He was familiar. They had briefly met, as far as I know, backstage, just Briefly, Elvis wasn't friends with Mike Stone. He knew of him. They shook hands. It was, but she must have fancied Mike Stone. She must have done. She must have noticed him. So then a bit later on, she sees her opportunity and she makes up her mind. Mike Stone is her way out of the marriage, a way away from the home, whichever home that they were living in. Even though he was married with kids, she was married with Lisa Marie. She made up her mind. I'm out of here. I have a plan. I'm going to find myself. This went on. This happened, guys. I know, again, you've heard it again and again. I know that. But my point is, I think Priscilla was very much in control when these things were happening. So she then demands a divorce. Late 71, I think. No matter what Elvis said, because Elvis didn't want a divorce at first. No matter what Elvis said, I'm going. Priscilla's going. We know the rest. She runs off, takes Lisa Marie, breaks up two families, breaks up Mike Stone's family with his kids. She, Francis Stone is pregnant. And then she goes off to find herself. We've heard it a million times. Not the love of her life, Elvis. She goes off to find herself. So we've heard it all. So what I want to do, I keep bringing up... Um, these old interviews. I think we have to go back and review these interviews because, and I'll tell you why, because I think um, if we don't look at some of these old interviews, what I'm saying doesn't really make sense. It doesn't really make sense. So let me just find it. On May 1st, 1967, Priscilla walked down that aisle. Let's find it, guys. This is May Day, and I was there. So, 
I, you have all seen it before. You've seen it all before. But unless we go through these interviews, and I, what I'm trying to make you guys understand here at Defending Elvis Presley, fans want the truth, is that... <coughs> Because sometimes people will tell me off and say, why are you picking on Priscilla? Why are you hating on Priscilla? Why are you to keep bringing up Priscilla? Why is she the main topic of your defending Elvis? So this is why. We're going to listen. I don't feel that I'm picking on Priscilla. I feel like I'm defending Elvis. Yeah, that's how I feel. So we're going to listen. We're going to break it down. Whilst we're listening, I'm going to read your comments. Um, let's go. Okay, I pause that very quickly. It's going to be interesting, guys. We've got a little while. I'm not in a rush. I, I'm telling you now, get yourself a coffee, get yourself a tea, because we're going to be here a while, unless I get an important phone call. Um, so I just want to say that when she spoke then, I was living in a bubble. Yeah? Now, remember, this. she moved to Graceland around 18, just before she turned 18. She knew exactly the life that Elvis had, the glamorous film star, singer, rock and roll star, making movies, making albums, doing tours. She knew, she knew. She, she knew about the Memphis Mafia. She knew all about the people that lived at Graceland. She knew about the build, you know, Graceland's the beautiful building, the lands around it. A very glamorous life. It was like moving into the to the Queen's Palace in the UK. She moved to glamour. She went from that life to that life. Yeah? So when she says, I felt like I was living in a bubble, bubble, she had, Elvis gave her her own car. Friends and family could come and go. She was mixing with many people at Graceland, including uh, the Memphis Mafia's wives, but many, many people. Yeah? She was not in a bubble. She free to do what she wants. Yeah. Now we're given the impression it was a bubble. It was a prison. She was stifled. Not correct. So that's what we're going to do. Every time she says something that we know now in 2024 is unfair to Elvis and incorrect. We're going to jump in and we're going to defend Elvis. Let's keep going. Coffee, guys. Like every other 14 year old, Priscilla Bonlieu was an Elvis fan. But unlike most teenagers, she was invited to meet him and he liked her. They saw each other nearly every day for six weeks until Elvis left Germany. Priscilla went with him to the airport, fearing she would never see him again. Elvis returned to Graceland. Called Priscilla, said he missed her, and then invited her to come for a visit. He took her to Las Vegas, changed her hair, changed her makeup, brought her clothes. And soon, she didn't look 14 anymore. Not long after her visit, Elvis convinced Priscilla's parents. 
friends to live and live with him in Memphis, assuring them that Priscilla would be well chaperoned by Elvis's father and that she would finish high school. Her parents reluctantly agreed. Priscilla lived with Graceland for six years before she and Elvis were married in 1967. Exactly nine months after the wedding, nine months to the day, their daughter, Lisa Marie, was born. Elvis was a proud father, but the relationship between Elvis and Priscilla started to change. His movie career was faltering. He was depressed and the trappings of success took a toll on their marriage. What began as a fairy tale romance ended in divorce in 1973. Nevertheless, Priscilla and Elvis remained friends and grew even closer after splitting up. Oh, the end is near. I saw a face, the final version. But by 1977, Elvis was shockingly heavy and his obvious bad health. That year, at age 42, Elvis Presley died. Hi, I'm Priscilla Presley. After Elvis's death, Priscilla started taking an acting lesson and signed as a spokeswoman for a shampoo company. Wanting to establish her own identity, she spent the next few years making a name for herself in Hollywood. Then in 1983, she landed the role of Jenna Wayne on the enormously popular primetime soap opera, Dallas. She was on that show for five years, proving to herself and the world that she could make it on her own. She parlayed that success onto the big screen in Naked Gun. Priscilla surprised everyone with her comedic ability and went on to star in both Naked Gun sequels. Aside from her acting career, Priscilla Presley has proven herself to be a most adept businesswoman. In 1979, she became the co-executor of Elvis's estate and organized Elvis Presley Enterprises. She opened Graceland to the public in 1982 and has closely controlled its finances through the years. Under Priscilla's guidance, the estate is now valued at over $100 million. At the time of Elvis's death, it was worth only $5 million. Just as Elvis helped to create Priscilla as a young woman, she in turn has helped to preserve his legacy. And through it all, she had the responsibility of raising Lisa Marie. Priscilla has always maintained that her family is her number one priority. Her son, Navarone, was born in 1987. She's been living with his father, Brazilian writer and filmmaker, Marco Garibaldi, since the mid-80s. At the time of our interview in 1985, Priscilla and Lisa Marie, then 18, divided their time between a home in Beverly Hills and this weekend retreat in Santa Barbara. Throughout the years, Priscilla had remained silent about her life with Elvis. But when we met, she was finally ready to tell her story. Her book, Elvis and me recounted the intimate details of her life with the king of rock and roll. You were 14 years old. Elvis was 24. Right? How did your parents allow a 14-year-old teenager, baby, to be with this then superstar? It wasn't that easy on my parents. You know, first of all, it was just an innocent meeting. And of course, you know, I was excited and I was, I was reluctant because I didn't think they'd ever let me go. But it was just a one-time opportunity. That's all they right, had. Right, done, guys. I never right. expected him to ask me back. They never expected him to ask me back. But Elvis did ask you back. And you saw him again and again. And you would get home very late at night and be exhausted the next day when you had to go to school. And your parents let you go again and again. It's, it's, you know, when you're in love, it's hard to fight. And I was rebellious on that, meaning I... I um, I didn't want to go to school, or I said I wouldn't go to school. Please let me, you know, he'd be out of my life after six months, and, um, you know, don't ruin my life because I really cared. And he came to my house, and he was charming. He was wonderful, and my family had a lot of faith in him. What was Elvis Presley like then? He was insecure. He was, um, you could talk to him as a person. You knew who he was. You knew his fears. He had, um, he was so vulnerable. He was uh, gentle. He was fun. 
he was um he was just uh, he was a person you could really deal with you write in your book you're 14 elvis would take me into his bedroom and then we would kiss long deep passionate kisses and his caresses would leave me weak with desire <laughs> yeah that's true yet he never tried to go further than kissing no no he didn't there was um an agreement I guess he made with himself that the woman that he decided to take for his wife was going to what? keep her that way and, until he married her. Keep her a virgin. Right. Yeah. What do you think attracted a 24 year old star to a 14 year old inexperienced? Or am, I, or am I telling you just as I say that? Is that what attracted him to you? Inexperienced, yes. I think. Um, <laughs> I was right. been around Hollywood already. He had already seen Hollywood quote unquote starlets. So I think in his own mind, he thought, well, I'll just um, be with someone and uh, teach her. I'm back. And so, as it comes. And I, I need to I pause it. <laughs> Guys, are you all screaming now? Are you all like, Argh! oh no. How many things? Did you listen to them whilst I was making my coffee? Guys, have you got your coffees? Very important you get yourself a coffee and a tea because we're going to be a little while going through this. What's the time? Let me see what the time is. Um, now, do you know what? When I was listening to that, even though I was running around making my coffee and the postman came, I was like annoyed. I was like, there were so many things. Yeah, Emily, Valium to calm you down. So many things that were said then. We're going to go back over all of it. This is only part one. We're going to probably be doing a part two, three, and four on this. This is going to be a long one, yeah? I've got a good hour, yeah? Are we okay to do this for another hour? Are we, is, is everyone, like, on board? Are we on board for this? Let me just check your comments. Um, right. So in case you're just joining us, um, we are defending Elvis Presley. Fans want the truth. We are defending Elvis Presley. Fans want the truth. Now, a lot of you are in America. 45% of you are in America. If you're just waking up, good morning to you from the UK. Ah, oh, coffee. Come on, guys. Have you got a lovely coffee? I put some honey in my coffee. It tastes beautiful. Ah, oh, it's worth doing this video just for the coffee. Right. Um, as I was saying, we're from, um, we're defending Elvis Presley. We're here to defend Elvis. We've got Team Elvis here. Uh, I'm waiting for a few more of you to jump on. Uh, I'm not so sure how many of you have got it. I'm going to just double check on the Facebook. If any of you have got... Um, our friends with any of the other subscribers or members, please let them know that we're live, yeah? Because there's normally more of you on than this, but I don't mind because I'm quite happy to just do it with you guys. Right, I'm just posting it now. i got a lot to say, guys. i got a lot to say, right. Let's have a look. Right, okay, we're just posting it on the Defending Elvis Presley. So just so you know, guys, we have a Facebook page, Defending Elvis Presley, which has a 24-hour chat. So please join the, the uh, Defending Elvis Facebook page. Join our chat. Right, okay. I've just posted it all again. Okay, right. Uh, just one little thing I wanted to mention. On the Defending Elvis Presley um, uh, Facebook page, it's not a selling page. I noticed someone last night posted trying to sell their Elvis collection. I think it was a bit of a scam. I think it was dodgy. So I've deleted that and I've blocked it. Do please, My advice to you, don't part with any money to anybody on Facebook trying to sell anything Elvis. Yeah? So I'm going to try and keep an eye on it. Okay, guys? So do not do that. Um, let's have a look. The, the, this... The interview, that interview infuriates me. It's, and it's not just Priscilla that infuriates me. Barbara Walters, her introduction, because we are going to review her, introdu her introduction before we review, 
before we review the actual interview. So it's a lot, it's an hour interview, isn't it? So it's going to take a while to go through that. We're not going to have time to go through all that today. But um, Barbara Waters is guilty of harming Elvis's image and reputation and legacy just as much as Priscilla, just as much. Barbara Waters, out of order. The way that she has reorganized the wording of her introduction to make Elvis look like a predator, um, to make him look like a weirdo, a pervert, a drug addict. The way, everything about that introduction has been done in a way to make Elvis look bad, to make Priscilla look good. Now, Priscilla doesn't jump in and disagree with Barbara Walters. She sits there with a beautiful smile on her face beautifully dressed, looking very sexy, stunning, guys, yeah? One of the most sexiest women in, on the planet at the time when this was made, I would say, yeah? Um, now, remember how the world is at the time when this has come out, yeah? No one knows the truth. No one knows all the gory details of the unfaithfulness. No one knows um, about how she had, right, had already treated him horribly with the divorce settlement, yeah? Two divorce settlements. No one knows all the wrongdoing that Priscilla had done, in my opinion, for entertainment purposes. This is just Louis at home. I'm an Elvis fan with my opinions. We've got opinions coming in from Team Elvis as well. And um, it's for entertainment purposes, yeah? So I just want to put that in there. I wasn't there. I don't know what actually happened, yeah? I am reviewing a very, very old vintage interview that I think was part of the way that the public was brainwashed to believe that Elvis was the bad guy and Priscilla was a victim. And I say the public because this isn't just aimed at Elvis fans or Priscilla fans. This is aimed at the general public. That interview was not watched by all Elvis fans. That interview was watched by the world, the world and repeat it again and again. And Priscilla is sat there with a smile on her face and with bags of money and property, all from Elvis, yeah? All from the divorce. The second divorce settlement was atrocious. She's sitting on the Empire of Graceland, yeah? How that happened, how a divorcee that had treated Elvis so badly, yeah? A lot of wrongdoing. From Priscilla, in my opinion, ended up the queen of Graceland, the boss of Graceland, almighty emperor of Graceland. Yeah, she she was in charge, the boss. You get it, guys? An amazing amount of power handed to her from her ex-husband. Remember that? Someone she had betrayed. Someone that she had broken up the family. She wanted the divorce. She wanted out. I'm not going to whitewash Elvis. We know in the early 60s, he acted like a single man. I won't change that. But when things started to go seriously wrong, when Elvis finally did the right thing and committed to marriage, engagement, marriage, baby, Elvis even becoming faithful and loyal, she took over and everything went wrong. The minute Elvis married that lady, in my opinion, Priscilla, gave her a baby. She had, once they're married, she's got equal rights to everything, yeah? His possessions, his belongings, his money, his wealth, yeah? As soon as that happened, as soon as the marriage is in there, you know, the, if you've, the hook has hooked, Everything went wrong. Everything went wrong. From then on, from the point of view of the marriage and money, property, cars, you name it, it went downhill very fast for Elvis. Now, of course, Elvis had massive success um, with the 68 comeback special, the 70 come, the, the Vegas comeback. You know, he, in his own right, as a entertainer, as a gifted singer, as a beautiful man, he completely dwarfed Priscilla. But his personal life, from the moment the divorce happened and after, was 
and I say this respectfully to Linda Thompson and Ginger Olden and all the other girlfriends, his personal life was a mess. I think he'd become unwell quite quickly. We know that he genetically inherited a lot of his um, chronic medical problems. We do think that the prescribed medication got out of control, even though he definitely needed it. He was a desperate man in a lot of pain, a lot of discomfort. But really, I think if you look at it as a whole, as a big picture, once Elvis um, was out of wedlock, some of you might, might not like that I'm saying this, it was a very rocky road. It was a very rocky road. Even with the relationships that we like, there were a lot of problems that Elvis couldn't settle with one person. Yeah. So we all know how it all turned out. It was quite tragic. And I think it all started from Priscilla's unfaithfulness with Steve Peck, the dance instructor and Mike Stone. I think those two things set Elvis on a rocky road. He had a lot of happiness as well after Priscilla. He got on with his life. He, a lot of success after Priscilla, but it was like that. Yeah. So let's go back. Now, my point is, and let me just quickly check your comments. And then we're going to start scrutinizing the introduction of the Barbara Walters interview. Yeah. It's going to take a while, guys. So get your coffees handy. Uh, I just want to welcome all of you, um, all my members, my subscribers. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, it really does mean a lot. Right, let's have a look. Rebecca, he did his best. She had no scruples. The stone, the stone man in his wife was expected. And what kind of woman does that not? And then Emily, Priscilla fought tooth and nail to be in Elvis' life and ensured that he married her only for her to have an affair not two months after Lisa's Marie was born. Sounds like entrapment. I get it, Emily. Obviously, there's a whole different story and a whole different reality that's in this child bride book shows a different reality for Priscilla's childhood uh, than this. Yeah. So let's keep going. Um, oh my God, the first lie, even Elvis didn't take her into his home at 14. Yes. I saw a lot of lies. They were like bullets. <laughs> Barbara Walters. <laughs> and Priscilla. Yeah. Um, let's have a look. Uh, uh, now, it, I would say that a lot of what the introduction said about Priscilla, I would say, um, was pre-written. Yeah, they had together agreed what was going to be said by Barbara Walls with the influence of Priscilla and Barbara. I think both of their words are in that introduction. Hi, Yvette, how are you? Rebecca, as she is, but all betrayals, he was broken. It's entrapment. Hi, Fanola. By the way, anyone that bought me a coffee, I know Fanola did, Thank you so much. It does mean a lot to me. It really does. I know I keep saying this, but when you guys buy me a coffee, you're saying, you're good. Thank you very much. We appreciate you. It does mean so much to me. Um, right. Um, so let's, we're going to, what we're going to do, we're going to start again. And then, but this time I'm going to pause it every time. <laughs> Right. I pause that bit. I can tell there's going to be a lot said that <laughs> that get what gets me uh, to grab the phone and try and talk to you. So she says I had my the things that I liked. I found out I found that I there was things I liked. Now she's speaking really as a I would say that when she says I found out that there was things I like. Really, she's talking about when she was 23, yeah? Because don't forget, um, they got engaged. 
December 66, so she would have been 21, yeah? Um, then they get married just before her 22nd birthday, uh, 1st of July, 1967. So at that point, she doesn't have a problem with thinking she doesn't know what she likes, yeah? Whatever rubbish she just said. After the divorce, I mean, sorry, after the marriage, Lisa Marie's born, 1968, she would have been 23, is it? Then about 18 months later, she runs off with Mike Stone. So I'm guessing she was about 25 when she ran off with Mike Stone, yeah? Do we agree with that? You give me, tell me in your comments, do you think Priscilla, when she ran off with Mike Stone, was around 25, right? I just want to wait for your answers first. How old do you think Priscilla was when she went with Mike Stone, I reckon, at the end of 1971, I think? I'll just wait for you to respond, guys. Oh, thanks, Emily. That's so kind of you. Um, well, let's work it out. If she is 21 when they got married in 67, and I think she ran off with Mike Stone 71, we can just add four years on. 25, yeah? 24, 25, yeah? Um, she was born in 1944. That's interesting. I should know that, to be honest with you. I do know it. I keep forgetting. Oh, it's Finola, thank you. You're very kind. You're very kind. Right. So... Now, remember, at 25 years old, she's saying, I found out I wanted to like the things that I like. I found out what I liked. How, why does a woman have to wait till she's 24, 25 to realise what she likes? Seriously, that comment is ridiculous. It's like, oh, so when I moved to Graceland when I was nearly 18, I didn't know what I liked. An 18-year-old girl. How many 18-year-old girls don't know what they like? She talks to Barbara Walters in that introduction as if she how can, as if she did, didn't have a brain. Oh, before I met Elvis, I didn't have a brain. Oh, and by the way, when I moved to Graceland at 18, I still didn't have my own brain. Oh, and at 25, after I've been unfaithful, ran off with Mike Stone, oh, I realised that I... I do have a brain and I know what I like. You get it, guys? Do just, you just see how ridiculous it sounds that she's saying to Barbara Walters, I didn't know what I liked until I was unfaithful. Let's keep going. some more hot water for my coffee so did you hear that guys i think i'm going to play it again because i want to hear it again are you ready hang on i want to play that bit again do an hour video just on what she just said just on that one sentence yeah now we know that the fact that she was 14 when Elvis first met her has been used against Elvis for 50 years more or less yeah over 50 years now it's been used against him again and again and again and again not just to call him a paedophile not they use that to call him a groomer, to say that he completely took advantage of her, to say that he was trying to find someone that he moulded. This is all part of the rubbish. He wanted a doll to mould, to dress, to do her hair, to do her makeup. Yeah? It's ridiculous because 
she priscilla trust me guys she knew exactly how to do her hair and makeup how to dress how to walk how to act how to talk how to move she knew exactly yeah now she let's talk about the 14 year old thing now we know that she was 14 when he briefly met her somehow curry grant introduced uh, priscilla to elvis now we know that it's a complicated story we don't know we have two versions we have this version where curry grant introduced her or we have this version where it was all pre-planned yeah now remember this is the thing that the, the general public don't understand elvis um how can i say it only knew her for a couple of months people think oh yeah you know maybe some of you here think it people think oh yeah you know they met at 14 and then things just carried on until they divorced at four uh sorry at 1973 the official divorce was 73 but they i actually think they split up in in the middle of it could have even been halfway through 1970 things went completely kaput but okay let's go with the 73 storyline the official divorce the so-called pictures that say that they were still good friends which in my opinion is a complete load of rubbish but anyway elvis wanted to put on a good front to the public to make them look like friends and make lisa marie think they were still friends elvis did keep meeting priscilla regularly for priscilla uh, for lisa marie to make Lisa Marie feel that they were still together. I believe that. Now, many of the public think that Elvis had a relationship from 14 with Priscilla when she was 14, right until they divorced. Yeah? Uh, I, I forget the age that they were when they divorced. 23, 24, right. Many of the public believe that. If you speak to the general public, they think that Elvis was sleeping with a 14-year-old, married a 14-year-old, lived with a 14-year-old. Now, Barbara Walters has just basically said Elvis got with a 14-year-old, lived with her for seven years, sleep, um, having sex with her except intercourse. Yeah? This is what has just been said. Now, who, now Priscilla, who calls Elvis the love of her life, yeah, speaks so highly of Elvis now. Where is she in that introduction say oh actually i only knew elvis for a couple of months then he went off in 1960 to make gi blues be on the frank sinatra show make some albums for rca victor where is that where is priscilla saying oh we want a couple oh we weren't having sex no and this is what i'm what the problem is a lot of the problems with these old interviews yeah and you can't undo them that is part of history. That happened. That is history. This isn't. That is. Yeah? The wording of that introduction. So my point is this. Priscilla now, during this interview, will follow the narrative of Barbara Walters. Every The way that Barbara Walters has drawn up her story for that interview will be the basis of the whole interview. You were took advantage of you were forced to live with Elvis. Why does Elvis want to be with a 14 year old girl, even though the truth is she didn't move to America until she was nearly 18, even though after Elvis had only had a friendship with her for a few months, two ish months, which is on a, you can see an Elvis interview, Elvis being interviewed when he comes out of the army, he clearly says, I met a little girl. I'd only known her for a few months. He says it. They only had a friendship for two months. Yeah. So even though he never saw her again after that, for I think at least two years, at least two years. Barbara Waters talks about it as if they from the age of 14, they were never apart. They were never. I repeat, Barbara Walters talks about the interview as if they were never apart never apart is um so do you get what i'm trying to say to you guys she went to high school all day partied all night and relied on pills to help her through it bizarre isn't a big enough word for the early life of priscilla presley because that's just the beginning of the story in a moment priscilla presley <laughs> Thank you.
Okay. Now, one of what I noticed, guys, one of Barbara Walters favorite words that she uses and from memory she'll use this word a few times bizarre now the reason she uses the word bizarre is to make elvis look weird look odd almost like that sort of, no offense to michael jackson fans they did it to michael jackson they would use silly things to make him look weird like talk about the monkey talk about the oxygen chamber um they would just say things to make michael jackson look weird this is obviously a different decade. Barbara Walters is using words to make Elvis look like some kind of nutter, some, like he was a weirdo that we didn't know about, that secretly Elvis was a strange person. He was not. Guys were defending Elvis Presley. Elvis was not a strange person, not at all. He was a normal, he was as normal as it gets. He had a humble upbringing. In Mississippi Tupelo, we know he was born in Old Satilla Road, but he did move to different houses after. Um, he wasn't always in the house that we all think he was in, the, the shack, the, the shotgun shack. But anyway, that's a different story. He had a Christian upbringing. He had a very decent upbringing. Yes, he struggled. Yes, they were very poor. His mother and father did their best. Elvis, there was nothing weird about Elvis other than he was extremely talented. Born with this beautiful gift, this beautiful voice, obviously amazingly looking man, best looking man on the planet, and the best heart, the heart of gold, the best personality, really charming, really polite, yes ma'am, yes sir, no ma'am, yes ma'am, yeah, the most polite man you'll ever come across. There was nothing bizarre about Elvis, nothing. The fact that he slept in the day and went out at night was was because of his fame it was that simple elvis could not go out into the public ever in the day he would get no matter how he tried to cover himself up how he dressed the public would spot him like that and he would be bombarded with fans wherever he went so he had to live his life at night he had no choice doesn't make him a weirdo at all. Elvis was not a weirdo because he had an upside down life. Elvis was the most famous man in the world. You imagine the 1950s, the kind of attention Elvis was getting, even the 60s. He couldn't go out. So he lived his life upside down. Doesn't make him bizarre. She, she calls him names and makes him out to be a weirdo. Priscilla should be defending Elvis. A proper interview... For the general public, and we know this went around the world many times, a blockbuster interview for Barbara Walters really made Barbara Walters even more famous than she already was. This was great for Barbara Walters, which is why she's loving creating this headline-grabbing interview that went around the world that made Barbara famous. I know that many of you are unhappy with the fact that Barbara Walters did that interview, many of you. She, I personally think Barbara Walters should be ashamed of herself that she allowed so many lies to happen. She allowed herself to be manipulated by Priscilla. Priscilla and Barbara manipulated each other to come out with thousands of lies about Elvis Presley, in my opinion, for entertainment purposes, and they got away with it. They got away with it, guys. This now is still played again and again and again, to millions of viewers, millions and millions of people are still watching these interviews that make Elvis out to basically be a predator, a paedophile, a drug addict, an abusive rapist, a child molester. That's what's happening here, guys. We ain't getting away from it. That is what's happening, and it is wrong. It's exactly why we are called Defending Elvis Presley. Exactly. Right, let me just keep going, guys. That was only That was just a tiny bit of introduction. He had millions of fans and was already a rock and roll and movie idol when she was only 11 and living in Austin, Texas. In 1958, Elvis was drafted into the army and shipped off to Germany. Coincidentally, Priscilla's father was an Air Force captain, and they too were transferred to Germany. Lovely, tender, lovely, sweet. Like every other 14-year-old, Priscilla Beaulieu 
too, was an Elvis fan. But unlike most teenagers, she was invited to meet him, and he liked her. They saw each other nearly every day for six weeks until Elvis left Germany. Fine. Do you know what? Whoa! Yes. I, I, do you know, I didn't even know that was in there. Proof. Proof. Guys, did you hear what she said? They saw each other for six weeks. Yes. I love that. Proof. Six weeks. He only knew her for six weeks. Oh, I'm so pleased that I've just heard that. Now, you think about it, guys. When you... We've read the very saucy details in this book. Yeah, the Elvis took her to bed many times and touched her up. Did everything but have sex with her. Even penetrated her. She even says the words, he entered me. Yeah? Now, remember, I've always said... I don't believe Priscilla's version of the fact that they were doing everything but sex. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I think this is just my opinion at home, an Elvis fan for entertainment purposes. I think the very saucy details in this book that Priscilla says about her and Elvis coming nearly close to sex many times are bullshit. I think she made it up. I think it was put in there to make Elvis look bad. He only knew her for six weeks. Now, if anyone knows anything about Elvis and you listen to all his other girlfriends, all, almost all of them over 20, you listen to June Junico, Anita Wood, and many others, Elvis wasn't a one-night stand guy. Elvis wasn't the type that wanted to get into your knickers straight away. He would befriend you. He would want to trust you. He would want to feel comfortable with you. He wanted to be able to talk to you and, and understand you. That was Elvis's way. He didn't. Elvis could have any woman he wants. Elvis could have sex whenever he wants. Elvis was not starving for sex. Yeah, it was on a plate. He intentionally wanted to get to know someone, and we know. Elvis poured his heart out to Priscilla in those six weeks, especially because his mother had passed away whilst he was in basic training. We also know that Elvis probably did tell Priscilla things that he, he probably didn't want to share with other people. So they did have a connection. They did, um, how can I say it? They did open up to each other in a way that um, when Elvis went back to German, uh, to America, stuck with him it's obvious i personally think that she wouldn't let things go i think when elvis went back to america i think that she pursued him with letter writing and phone calls yeah eventually that became each other i think she wouldn't let it go I think he wouldn't let it go there's a possibility that the uh, that priscilla's mother was involved my point is this it was just six weeks i don't believe all the sultry stuff said in the elvis and me book i don't believe it just don't believe it. That is my right as an Elvis fan. So, okay, let's keep going. I went with him to the airport, fearing she would never see him again. Elvis returned to Graceland. He called Priscilla, said he missed her, and then invited her to come for a visit. Right. Right, hang on. Whoop. I'm going to keep buttoning, guys. He called Priscilla, said he missed her. And invited her to grace that. Do any of you believe that? Seriously, I'm asking you now, as Elvis fans, do you believe that Elvis called her, told her he missed her, and invited her to America? Because I don't. I think there was a lot of letter writing. I think they hadn't seen each other for two years. She doesn't mention that. Remember that. They hadn't seen each other for two years. But the way Barbara Walters narrates it, she says, Elvis goes back to America and then he calls up Priscilla and invites her to America because he misses her. As if it happened the next day, a week, as if it happened the week after. No, there was over two years of letter writing. She would even send him records. Did you know this, guys? She would send him the latest hits in records and she would, she pursued Elvis. She pursued Elvis. Now, do I think Elvis, um, there was some kind of connection between Elvis and Priscilla? Yes, obviously, because they ended up getting married. 
But Barbara Waters, he missed her and he invited her to America like that. There was at least a two year gap. She was two years older. She was nearly 18. She did go to Graceland's while she was 17, I think twice, once at Christmas, to visit Elvis. Remember, she's always said they never had sex. Changed her hair, changed her makeup, brought her clothes, and so she didn't look 14 anymore. Mm. Not come for a visit. Her right. Theory. We're going to play that again. Now, remember what she says. I completely disagree with the fact that Elvis groomed her, dressed her, did her hair, did her makeup, what shoes to wear, what clothing to wear, um, how to walk, yeah, how to act. Elvis did none of those things. Now, did Elvis give her money to buy beautiful clothing? Did Elvis, of course he did. Did Elvis, um, if she put a nice dress on, did Elvis tell her if it suited her? Well, who doesn't? What man doesn't tell his girlfriend or wife if something looks good on them? Yeah, if their hair looks nice. Come on. Now, was did Elvis force her how to dress, how to do her hair, do her makeup, how to act, how what shoes to buy, how to walk? Of course not. That's ridiculous. She was nearly 18. Nearly 18. Yeah. What 18-year-old girl doesn't know how to do her makeup, do her hair, do her pick a dress, pick her shoes? That 10-second wording from Barbara Walters is bullshit. And it's exactly why he's called a groomer, a controller, because the context of that interview and a very similar interviews to that have been said again and again and again and again for decades. For decades, people have been repeating the same bullshit that Elvis wanted a doll that he could dress and mold and turn into what he wanted. It is bull. Even the Memphis Mafia half said it. This is why I'm very disappointed with many of the Memphis Mafia members. So let me just quickly check your comments. Right, so she, Philomena, she nagged until he invited her. I do believe that she nagged. I do. Um, I would, do you know what? Yeah, Rebecca, yeah. No different than... Look, even you girls, you out there, right? Many of you are female. If your husband buys certain clothing, a suit or something nice to wear, you're going to tell him if it suits him. It doesn't mean you're controlling him. It doesn't mean that you're grooming him. You get what I'm saying? This is why this interview is just so unfair. She would never see him again. Elvis returned to Graceland. He called Priscilla, said he missed her, and then invited her to come for a visit. Took her to Las Vegas, changed her hair, changed her makeup, brought her clothes, and so she didn't look 14 anymore. Oh, oh my God. Guys, did you just hear that? Did you hear what she just said? We already know about the rubbish about him forcing her to change her hair and clothes and makeup. But then she says, and soon she didn't look 14 again. Are you getting, are you picking up? <laughs> Oh, my God. Why didn't anyone tell that woman off? Barbara Walters. Right. Remember, we've just discussed this. It's all been proved. She didn't. That's it, Rhonda. She didn't move to Graceland. I'm, do you know what? I'm... <laughs> oh, that, that one really gets me. Now, remember, she didn't move to Graceland until she was nearly 18. This is, pro this is proven. Proven. She didn't see Elvis through her 14, 15, and 16, and 17. It wasn't until she was 17 she saw him. Obviously, she saw him for the six weeks when she was 14, when he was in Germany. So Barbara Walters has just said she didn't look 14 anymore. Yeah, because she was nearly 18. Come on. See, th this is what I would call defending Elvis Presley. Fans want the truth. If there's any Priscilla fans watching now, please take on board what's happening here. What we're trying to do with Team Elvis, we're a small family that's growing. We're here to defend Elvis. We are Elvis defenders. We're just trying to get across to 
not just to Priscilla fans, not just to Elvis fans, not just to the subscribers and members of this channel, to the general public. You have been fooled. It's on, I did a video, one of my most successful videos I've done, you have been fooled. El, um, so you're being fooled, guys. If you are non-Elvis fans, the general public, that think Elvis is a pedo and a binging on cheeseburgers, you have been fooled, yeah? Listen to what's happening here. We, we are being manipulated through that interview. That interview changed everyone's mind around the world about Elvis Presley. That in interview made everyone around the world, including Elvis fans, think Elvis might be a pedophile and a weirdo. Because everyone believed every word of that interview. And we've only been listening to that interview for about four minutes. We're not even at the interview. This is just the introduction from Barbara Walters. And the whole world has already been conned, spoon-fed lies, misled into that. So we've just, another lie, Elvis, because she looked 14, Elvis redressed her, redid her hair and makeup, and now she doesn't look 14 anymore. It never happened, because when she moved to Graceland, she was nearly 18. Let's keep going. Let's see what other lies we can pick out. And Priscilla, I hope you're watching this, Priscilla Presley, because you should have been jumping in and disagreeing with Barbara Walters and telling her the truth. You should have been saying, well, actually, I did my own hair because I've seen Priscilla in interviews saying that she loved her beehive hairstyle. She loved it. It made her feel older. But I've also, um, why is it that you've allowed Barbara Walters to do such a horrible story about Elvis Presley when you know damn well that you moved to America when you were nearly 18, but you've allowed the world to think that when you moved to America, you were 14. Why are you not saying, oh, actually, I didn't see him for two years, three, it could be nearly three years, couldn't it? This is why you're so out of order, Priscilla. This is why we want to bring you to the table and apologize for that. If you just apologize for that one interview, it's the start of the Elvis fans, the general public, understanding that Elvis wasn't the pervert that you that you make him out to be, that Barbara Walters made him out to be. Elvis gave you such an amazing opportunity, and it has all been thrown in his face for 50 years. Elvis convinced Priscilla's parents to let her live with him in Memphis, assuring them that Priscilla would be well chaperoned by Elvis's father and that she would finish high school. Her parents reluctantly agreed. Priscilla lived in Graceland for six years before she and Elvis were married in 1967. Right, okay. Right, we're going to look at the timeline there. But um, CKC, hi, hi CKC. Um, you actually told me your name the other day. Is it? Is it Chrissy? CKC, is your name Chrissy? Just please tell me. Um, so CKC says... She was 17 when she visited California and Vegas two weeks in June in 1962. Well, we can use that as the timeline, yeah? Um, Emily, the, Emily, she appeared older before Elvis. She knew how to groom herself. She was telling Patty Perry, hairdresser, to tease her hair higher. I have read Elvis didn't say that to Patty for her. It's obvious she did her own hair. Come on. She wasn't 10 years old. It's all part of the Priscilla disrespecting Elvis model. Louis, Priscilla did not correct the error. That was intentional. Yes, Helen, I know that. Yeah, I'm trying to show that in this video, in this live stream around the world to non-Elvis fans, especially because I think it's the non-Elvis fans that have been tricked, that have been um, robbed of the truth. Yeah, we're exposing the lies. Defending Elvis Presley, fans want the truth. Um, yeah, I thought it was. My name is Chris. Yeah, Chris, uh, uh, I because I, I always call you CKC Design. I want to call you Chris. Uh. That is a beautiful name. Beautiful name. And it, right. Um, right, Philomena. Did you know that the question I've given to the guests and talked about before taping, plus 
they rehearse the whole interview. I believe that, yes. Philomena, thank you. Philomena, thank you. Uh, I love your comments, by the way. I always read all your comments. Please know that, yeah? Right, let's keep going, guys. Now, we've already done an hour and 15 minutes, so we've still got a bit longer. Let's just, uh, I'm going to check the time in a second. Um, let's keep going. I have to, I'm going to backtrack on that because, <laughs> oh my God, there is so much to say. I, um, I've still got a little while, guys. We, we've still got half an hour. Right. Uh, one of you just said, I'm so angry. Was it, who was it that said that? Let's have a look. Philomena, annoyed and angry. Oh, oh do you know what? The, the side of me that just loves Elvis yeah just oh, oh i want to i don't know what to say i'm frustrated i want to pull my hair out right we're going to go back and then th i'm going to stop it on every comment there's just so many things i wanted to say then but i was distracted because my wife had messaged me right let's have a look right let's do it again we'll go back to the bit i missed right ready i will stop it this time Right, I'll just pause that bit first quickly. Now, there is a completely alternate version of what she has just said. We don't know who convinced who. We've all heard the story that Elvis phoned up um, Priscilla's father and said, don't worry, I'm going to look after her and all the rest of it. We don't actually know that that's true. This is Priscilla's version of events. Elvis never said it. Elvis never said, oh, I phoned up Priscilla's dad and convinced him to allow Priscilla to come over to America. I keep saying this, every word in this book may not be true. I say this to non Elvis fans and Priscilla fans. Every word in this book may not be true. It was written by a divorcee, not a widow. Her name was Bulo. seven years after he had died. When they split up, it was a very cruel, 
parting, a very cruel divorce. The divorce settlement was very, very greedy and again, cruel. Yeah. So remember, this book was all about making money, rewriting history. Yeah. And making Priscilla look good. Elvis look bad, in my opinion, for entertainment purposes. OK, let's keep going. Right, let's work that out. Let's work it out, yeah? Now, I will just say this, and not, not many of you like it when I say this. When Priscilla did finally move to Gracelands when she was nearly 18, Elvis did act like a single man, yeah? So many of you try to tell me that Elvis was faithful to Priscilla in night, from between 1962 and 1966. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't mean that. I'm not trying to um, say bad things about the man that I adore and admire. But come on, guys, as much as we are um, that we love Elvis, we know that when she first moved over, he was still seeing other people. He, he had other girlfriends, even Anita uh, for a while. We know that things happened between him and Anne Margaret. He was seeing people for, for as long as four years on and off, different people, different co-stars. And that must have been cruel and difficult. For Priscilla, it must have been, guys. Come on. Priscilla knew it was going on. Now, you guys will say to me, well, she knew what she was getting into. I agree. She was getting with a rock star, a rock and roll star, a film star, a beautiful man. She knew the attention he got. He was in his 20s, still very, how can I say it, active. But it was something that she did accept. She accepted that... That was the world she was entering. She just wanted Elvis. She was going to have a compromise of, do you know what? If I have to accept that he's got a secret life with other women and the Memphis Mafia, yeah, I will accept it because I want him. Because one day maybe we may get married, yeah? So let's keep going, guys. Right, hang on. So she says that the relationship started to change. Now she's jumped over. This is why we're defending Elvis Presley, guys. She's jumped over the Steve Peck affair. Why has she jumped over that? The relationship was starting to change. Yeah? Come on. Whatever the reasons are, whether it's because she was frustrated because she knew Elvis had seen other girls in the past, or whether it was because... She just fancied men. She felt she was frustrated sexually. She wanted attention. Yeah. She found other men hot. Yeah. Steve Peck, the dance instructor. The guy who in the dance studio. You know, Mike Stone, the karate champion. Whatever the reasons are, she fancied other men. She was bored. She wanted to feel good. She wanted to have sex. Yeah. So she doesn't mention, oh, by the way, they got married. Then two to three months after the marriage, she was having an affair with another man, the Steve Peck, the dance instructor, which, by the way, is in her book. She calls him Mark, page 262. But my point is this. She jumps over that. Barbara Walters, she's talking to the world as if she's repeating history with each of her words that comes out of Barbara Walters' mouth. She's telling the world. She's reciting history. She skips over the fact that Priscilla was unfaithful twice. More than twice, I think. But at least twice. There's also a possibility that in the 60s, she was chasing after men as well. The two different singers. Um, I think one was a pastor. The other one was like a rock and roll singer. But that's more of a rumour. Yeah. But you get where I'm going. She skips all that. She doesn't say that she demanded that Priscilla had secretly been seeing Mike Stone for a year. And that when Priscilla, when Elvis found out, 
that Priscilla demanded a divorce. She skips all of that, all of it. Right, let's keep going, guys. Uh, actually, before I press play, I'll just check your comments. Um, she was supposed to stay at Vernon's wife, uh, but she kept sneaking out, inviting herself into Graceland. Pat, yeah, we've heard this. He wasn't committed to Priscilla, so why not Louis? He wasn't um, her until they got engaged. Yeah, Philomena, I get your point, but I will say this. it must That must have been difficult for Priscilla. I want to be fair. I don't want to be very biased against Priscilla. I don't think that's going to help us try and prove that Elvis was wrong. I think for us defending Elvis, Team Elvis, to really prove that Elvis... Uh, was wronged by Priscilla. I have to. I think we must admit his wrongdoing. We must admit his mistakes. That he did things wrong as well. And um, and I think, no matter how you put it, he was unfaithful to Priscilla in the sixties. He was. We have to accept that. We can't whitewash Elvis. Otherwise, we're going to look silly. So that is my answer to that. Um, uh, it, uh, it wasn't in the script, Louis. She was reading what they agreed to talk about. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Philomena, I agree. Yeah. Uh, why doesn't any interviewer speak about her having an affair? Yes, Jean. This is why we're playing this. She just skipped over that. She skips over the two horrible affairs that she had during, uh, just after the marriage, less than 10 months after the marriage. This is what makes it all so horrible. Um, uh, if Elvis was all things, she says, what did she go through with the wedding? Well, the uh, the best answer I can give you to that, Pat, is because it was Elvis, yeah? Um, so let's have a look. Uh, why doesn't any interviewer speak about her having an affair? Yeah, sorry, I just read that. If Elvis was all... Right, let me just keep going. So, hi, Jean. So, Kathy wrote in her book that Elvis wanted to write his autobiography and they already have the name... For his book, though my yeah, through my eyes. That's interesting. Uh, and Aileen, that's a very interesting coffee. Uh, com sorry, uh, comment. Um, to write an autobiography, and he already had the name of his book through my eyes. That's interesting. That's the first time I've heard that, Aileen. Thank you. Um, so let's have a look. Yes, Re Rebecca, we gotta be fair. We gotta be fair. I think at one time he regretted bringing Pete over. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jane, I agree with that. Um, uh, she wanted revenge and got it and still is. Yvette, the more I learn about Elvis and how he was treated and Priscilla's actions after the divorce. It, no, actually, even before that, with Mike Stone, and from Mike Stone onwards... It does feel a bit like revenge. It does. It's almost like she's laughing on the other side of her face. So, like, she sat there in the interviews, you know, the interview. Because I, I always say this, guys. The interviewers do more damage than Priscilla. Because the type of questions that they're asking are very hurtful and damaging to Elvis's image and reputation. So, she's like, oh, yes, you know, I'm, um, yeah, I'm a widow. And, uh. I was lost with that Elvis. He's the love of my life. I still love him. And then the interviewer with his nasty little question says, oh, so he, did he control you and groom you? Did he, um, you couldn't even dress the way you wanted to. And uh, he was obviously seeing other women. And you were only 14 when you met him. Yes, I know. But it was different times then. You get it, guys. You get it manipulation too much um right hi james james my friend i love it when james comes on me and james are mates um i didn't know that alien what an amazing book that would have been yes Rhonda. i would love to elvis to come out with his side before he passed away all of us would and maybe we'll get a hint of that from lisa marie and riley q's book Louis, yes, I agree. They were not a couple. They were just friends, not engaged, not married. So when was he unfaithful? Philomena, 
Um, now, Philomena, you know I love you, yeah? But I have to say to you that if you move a girl who is nearly 18 to Gracelands and she's living there for how many years before they got married? Four years. It wasn't seven like um, Barbara says. For four years. Come on. She thought she thought she was his girlfriend. Yeah, she did. Come on. Let's at least admit that. You, I say that to you, Pat. I mean, to you, um, I, to Philomena. I say it very respectfully. Yeah. Um, but, you know, if you've got different views than me, that's OK. That's fine. I'm not I'm not the boss of what of how you guys think. I just give you my take on things. Louis take. You don't have to agree with me. Yeah. I'm no expert. I've told you a million times. I'm just a fan at home. I have my version of things. I'm no expert. Uh, let's have a look. Um, I can see how Philomena gets a bit defensive because she's like, oh, no way was I was unfaithful. I understand. Please don't take it the wrong way. Yeah. Philomena, you're one of my favorite subscribers. Please don't take things wrong. Um, let's have a look. Um, So let's have a look. Uh, let me just get to this. So, all right, we're going to play a bit more. So, wow, I'm a fan. Right, Elvis biography title should be Through His Eyes. Yes. That's one of the best comments I've seen, I, Aileen. Really good. Really good. Um, was revenge for Anne-Margaret. Yvette, very possible. Very possible. In my opinion, she started getting revenge when Elvis wouldn't take her back. Um, I think before that, Pat, I think I think the Mike Stone was revenge. I really do. Mike Stone was a very powerful person. He was one of the few people that would stand up to Elvis. Yeah? She chose wisely. She chose wisely. Oh, you're welcome, Aileen. You're welcome. Uh, hi, Deborah. Deborah, I hope you're well. Uh, Deborah had some good news from the doctors. She's lost another eight pounds. Yo, Deborah. She's on the keto diet, guys. We're very proud of you, Deborah. Right. Um, I am still addicted to Elvis Hairy Chest. Laugh out loud just to remind you. <laughs> uh, Aileen, I think many of you are. Uh, Jean, I have read that she dyed her hair the same colour as Anne for a bit. Now, we've heard this before, that she mimics women that her boyfriend's girlfriends had. She mimics the hairstyle that the girlfriend of the man she fancied had. And she's done it again and again. I've heard this. Yeah. Uh, not just uh, Frances Stone, who was Mike Stone's wife, but also Robert Kardashian. Um, uh, is it What's her name? The actress of Love Me Tender. Ah, oh, Deborah Pageant stuff. I've heard it. Someone posted a very good video that just shows all the different times that she's copied the hairstyles of the the women that are with men that she fancied. I'm trying not to sound too disrespectful here, but um, someone also said to me she she liked married men. Is that true, guys? Is that true? Did Priscilla like married men? I'm not saying she did. Is it true? Um, one thing I do think that she was so beautiful and sexy, and I know it irritates. When I say to you guys that Priscilla was beautiful and sexy, it irritates you because you're you're so anti Priscilla. You don't want to hear it. But she could seduce any man. I'm telling you now, guys, I'm a man. I know how weak men can be when it comes to sexy, beautiful women when you're in your 20s. Yeah. Now I'm speaking on behalf of a man in his 20s, maybe even early 30s. Remember, I'm 57. Yeah. If Priscilla in the 70s approached any man who was in his 20s with that sexiness, how beautiful she was. She was going to get in, guys. She was going to get in quite easily. I think Priscilla toyed with men. Toyed with her. I think men to Priscilla were objects to have fun with. And 
She may have even been very... <laughs> she may have even had a high sex drive. What do you think, guys? Do you think Priscilla had a high sex drive? I say it respectively, respectfully. That'll make uh, James laugh. James, do you think Priscilla had a high sex drive? So I'm getting carried away. Sorry, guys. We have to have a bit of fun. Priscilla, if you've heard me saying this, I mean it respectfully. <laughs> oh, sorry. I need to calm. Calm. Yeah, James. Oh, yeah. Right, come on. Oh, it's all right. I got the giggles now. Uh, I never ever, I never said Priscilla wasn't beautiful. That's true, Rebecca. Men, do you know what? Men sometimes can be so basic. <laughs> uh, I, I shouldn't say that because I'm one of them. Yeah. Uh, she used that. Yes, Pat. She definitely used it to her advantage. Um, but let me just check the time. Let me check my messages. We've still got a bit longer. Uh, so I need to just read this. I'm going to play a bit of that while I read this message. Um, As for the toll of their marriage, what began as a fairy tale romance ended in divorce in 1973. Nevertheless, Priscilla and Elvis remained friends and grew even closer after splitting up. Oh, in despair. So I face the final but by 1977, Elvis was shockingly heavy and in obvious bad health. That year, at age 42, Elvis Presley died. So I just want to, before I play that bit, I just want to say that many of you comment to me saying that with Priscilla, it was always about being famous, having the spotlight, being like Elvis, making movies, becoming a movie star, having lots of money. Many of you feel that there was an under a secret plan from Priscilla when she first, when she went to, when she moved to Graceland that the plan was to marry Elvis and then take advantage of him and then use the newfound fame as being Elvis's ex-wife or wife, yeah? So she could become famous and get the spotlight. Now this goes on to say all the success that she had, not much, she had some success. She couldn't act, in my opinion, she was a terrible actress, but she did have some success. Um, I think Dallas is probably the, and, and the, um, the silly comedies uh, franchise. I can't remember what it's called. Um, she did have some success. But the truth is, if you if you actually look at Priscilla's life now and the last 40 years, she's needed the fact that she was the trustee on behalf of Graceland to get any success, hasn't she? She's needed the Presley name to get success. This is why she took it back. We don't really know when she took it back. I think around 1979, we don't really know, do we? Um, but my point is that if you look at Priscilla, she does like the the spotlight. She does like it. She she enjoys um, being followed around by the paparazzi and being and having regular uh, events that she attends and where she's the centre of attention. She does like that. I, th I don't know even if I'm saying that in a bad way. I just think secretly this very shy so-called virgin now obviously there's different opinions on whether or not she was a virgin but that isn't the point she she um this she wasn't this shy quiet girl was she that was you know that wanted to be hidden away she wanted fame fortune attention she wants she, some of you say that she envied Elvis because he had this talent and he was loved so much that she craved to be loved the way Elvis was. Well, you can't do that because the reason the fans and the public loved Elvis was for him. 
for his spirit, his soul, his personality, his music, his moves. There's so many reasons why the public adored Elvis and still do 47 years later. Yeah. So my point is this. Priscilla was never going to achieve that kind of love from the public, from the Elvis fans. Yeah. Because she wasn't Elvis. So did she envy him? Did she wish she was him? Was she jealous of him? Yeah? You guys are going to answer that yourselves. So now will Priscilla get that kind of attention? Yeah, from Priscilla fans. But unfortunately, in my opinion, many of the Priscilla fans, no offence to you guys, have not done their research, do not know the truth, have been brainwashed, misled, spoon-fed lies, in my opinion, for entertainment purposes. So even the Priscilla fans, that adoration that she gets from the Priscilla fans, it's not real because it's based on lies, in my opinion. It's based on lies. We have been manipulated and misled. The truth has been reinvented and twisted. Yeah? So... If you are a Priscilla fan, I say this to you with respect. I've got nothing against you. You're very welcome on our show to join Team Elvis, to defend Elvis. Please go back and look again at how you've been misled. Try and understand why we, in our tens of thousands, are defending Elvis Presley, not just through my YouTube channel, yeah? Defending Elvis Presley fans want the truth. And we've got the Facebook, Defending Elvis Presley. Please join it and, uh, and join our 24-hour chat on Messenger. But the, the, peop the, the amount of people that are defending Elvis now is growing. It is growing. There's a small movement that is growing. Yesterday, we had Rare Elvis photos join us. Um, uh, were you here, guys? Rare Elvis photos. A very a massive Elvis Defender, Defending Elvis YouTube channel, Rare Elvis Photos, which I highly recommend that you um, subscribe to. He's got a great channel. He even is a great singer. His, he has done a beautiful song um, for Elvis. Beautiful. More than one, actually. Um, there's a couple that he's done that I really, really like. But my point is, guys, we have other channels that are also Defending Elvis. Yeah? And um, it's growing. So, Priscilla fans, I say this to you. Look out to these other channels. Find out who the defenders of Elvis are, the Elvis defending channels. Learn some facts. Get to the truth. And then you won't think that we're just being hateful. Because anyone that tells me I'm a Priscilla hater, you're wrong. Anyone that thinks I'm trying to incite hate for Priscilla, you are wrong. I am trying to defend Elvis with Team Elvis. I am trying to get to the truth. That's all I am. I am trying to be fair to Elvis. I always say this. Elvis cannot defend himself. So we have to do it. Me, Team Elvis, Elvis defending channels. We got to do it. If the fans don't defend Elvis, who's going to do it? Nobody else is. I put it to you. You try and find outside of YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. You try and find anyone defending Elvis, and you won't. You won't see it on TV. You won't see it on Netflix, on Prime. You won't see it. You won't see a biography, a documentary, a movie, a TV drama defending Elvis. You won't see it. Nobody is doing it. No one wants to know because there's no money in it. There's no money to be made by Netflix. Now, you'll see plenty of things. Recently, there's been something on Prime TV in the UK. I'm not sure if you get it in America. There's been some documentaries in Australia, yeah, that are disgusting how they talk about Elvis. My point is this. If we don't defend, who's going to? And I say this to Priscilla fans. Do your research. Get to the truth, yeah? Get to the truth then you're going to want to join us and you're going to want to defend Elvis. Because if you are a Priscilla fan, I know you're an Elvis fan. If you are a Priscilla fan, 
I know you are an Elvis fan. Now, Elvis comes first. Elvis comes first. As, as much as you love Priscilla and are loyal to Priscilla, Elvis is the reason we're here, including the Priscilla fans. I don't believe for a second that Priscilla fans dislike Elvis. I don't, I can't see that. It doesn't make sense to me. So all I ask you is this. I don't want you to hate Priscilla. I want you to help us expose the truth so we can spread it around the world in every country because we are a worldwide channel. We are a worldwide channel. Every country is watching our live stream. Every country, yeah? Um, if we can just get it out there that what has happened to Elvis is so unfair because he can't defend himself, we might be able to make a difference, guys. We might be able to make a difference if we come together. The more of us there are, the bigger we grow, the more that we can start to make the general public understand that something's not right here. Something's not right here. Yeah. Why have all these lies been ignored for 40 odd years, 50 odd years? Why? Why is not just Priscilla? Why have the TV companies and the tabloids and the magazines and the biographies and documentaries and TV dramas? Why have they all been allowed to make Elvis look horrible, to, to damage his image, his reputation, to harm his legacy? Even lately with the newest film, Priscilla by Sofia Coppola, why was that allowed to happen? Why did such um, a famous filmmaker like Sofia Coppola, why was she allowed to make this horrific movie that makes Elvis look disgusting, yeah, that really harmed his legacy, it really did, his reputation, his image? Why is all these things allowed to happen? And no one's jumping up and defending Elvis. No one. Yeah. So anyway, guys, I'm going to end it at that. Now, we have still got a long way to go. Look, let me show you. Look how long <laughs> we've earned. Look at, look at the red line, guys. The red line. We're going to come back. We're on four minutes and five seconds. We've got a long way to go. A long way to go. But I have to go. I've got stuff I've got to do. So... I'm sending you all love. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I always say this, guys. Buy me a coffee to say thank you, to show me you like what I'm doing, to give me a gold star. You buy me a coffee gives me a gold star. That's what it does. But please subscribe. If you want to be a member, you're very welcome. The membership is only a dollar a month. It's nothing. It's the lowest amount I could set it to. It's not because I want your money. Yeah? So, um I really have enjoyed, we've had a very, very nice, um, we've had a very, very nice live stream. I'm going to put my email address. Any of you can email me. Let's have a look. There, there's my email address. If you want to buy me a coffee, you just send a couple of dollars to PayPal and then I'll go and buy a nice coffee. And if you want to email me direct, guys, Email me direct. I'll talk to you. No problem. Join the 24-7 chat line on Facebook Messenger. Join our Defending Elvis Presley Facebook page. Let's chat 24-7, 24 hours a day. We can talk. Yeah. Um, so thanks, guys. Thank you very much. I, You lot mean a lot to me. Seriously. Oh, James, come on. You're my friend. Me and James are pals. James, how's everything going? All right. I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go off and uh, I'm gonna read through your comments. And I'm coming back to do a part two. That was part one. Now we've done nearly two hours. I'm doing a part two, guys. Anyway, I want to end it with a song. I want to end it with a song. Okay, and I, I hope I haven't offended any Priscilla fans. You're, you're welcome here. And even Priscilla, we want an apology from you. That's what we want. We invite you to apologize. I don't hate you. I'm not trying to stir hate. We're just trying to get to the truth. Priscilla, message me. We can have a chat and we can let you apologize to the general public, to the Elvis fans, 
and start to change the narrative, change the story back to the truth. Yeah, because you know that that interview was cruel to Elvis. Right, we're going to play a song. We're going to play a song, guys. I'm going to, do you know what? I'm going to play my favourite song. My favourite song. But I want to do it with the video as well. Do any of you remember my favourite song? Any of you remember which one it is? <laughs> 